Marta Kristen's story has touched the hearts of fans for years. Can you believe that she managed to be one of the best actresses of the 60s, even though she came from nothing and was even an orphan? But how did her heartbreaking childhood impact her acting career? Continue watching to find out. Marta Kristen was part of the highest budget series to ever be made. Around half a century ago, families across the United States sat down on a Wednesday evening to watch the premiere of a new science fiction series on CBS, Lost in Space. This was one of the most expensive television pilots to ever be produced. But this movie turned out to be much more than a high-budget series. The show premiered way back in 1965, when the Beatles and NASA space programs were all the rage. This kind of explains where the show got its aesthetic from. For its first year, Lost in Space was broadcast in black and white, but it was still interesting enough to capture people's attention thanks to its dark and at times expressionist filming. A part of this show was actress Marta Kristen. Kristen was an orphan. The actress was born with an entirely different name, Birgit Annalisa Rusinen, in Oslo, Norway. Her upbringing was not as fortunate as other children's, as her father lost his life during World War II when Kristen was just a baby. Her mother, on the other hand, was in a horrible financial state to take care of her. So, soon after the loss of her father, Kristen's mother sent her to an orphanage, never to see her daughter again. But the soon-to-be actress got really lucky, as an American couple offered to adopt her in 1949. Kristen would soon start living with them in Detroit, Michigan. About a decade later, she moved to Los Angeles, California to further her high school studies. Kristen's adoptive parents weren't supportive of her career. When Kristen was 15, she was offered the lead role of Lolita by producer Jimmy Harris. However, she missed this huge opportunity when her parents refused to let her play the role after reading the book that the film was based on. But Jimmy Harris was so impressed by Kristen's acting abilities, he didn't let her go that easily. He got her a personal agent that helped her get cast in a few small movie roles. She changed her name for it to sound more European. The actress never forgot about her true heritage. When she got older and discovered her passion for acting, she decided to change her name to Marta, as it sounded much more European. She then ended up using Marta Kristen as her stage name for the rest of her acting career. When Kristen was convinced she wanted to become an actress, she wasted no time and started auditioning for various films. Her first ever appearance on television was in 1961, when she acted a small role in an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents Bang, You're Dead, alongside Billy Mooney, who later co-starred with Kristen again in the show Lost in Space. However, Kristen didn't get too much recognition out of this. Her success would eventually come with the release of the 1965 movie Beach Blanket Bingo when she played Lorelai. Kristen's acting was so good, she didn't even have to do a screen test when auditioning for Lost in Space. The casting crew just offered her the role immediately. Lost in Space featured a cast with impressive acting abilities, such as Guy Williams, June Lockhart, Mark Goddard, Angela Cartwright, Billy Mooney, and Jonathan Harris. This show even gave the world some really good catchphrases, such as, that does not compute, and danger, Will Robinson, danger. Fans still remember Kristen's unforgettable performance in Attack of the Monster Plants, an episode in which she played her evil twin produced by a Dutron guzzling plant. When Kristen talks about this infamous episode, she says that it really embodied her love for acting. She then reveals that acting was her life's passion, and she started doing it when she was five years old. Even though her parents wanted Kristen to focus more on dancing rather than acting, she still stood her ground and followed her heart. Marta Kristen and Mark Goddard were supposed to have an unforgettable romance on the show. In the show, Kristen portrayed the eldest daughter, Judy Robinson, while Mark Goddard acted as the spaceship pilot, Major Don West. In the original storyline of the sci-fi series, both of them were supposed to have a strong and unforgettable romance. This was when the series was meant to be an adventure show about a family and their pilot, but things took a sudden change, and the show's imperious creator decided that the storyline of the show needed to drastically change to become better. 
Soon, the creator added other characters, such as Jonathan Harris as a feat expedient stowaway, Dr. Zachary Smith, and the environmental control robot. After three long years in space, there was almost nothing between Kristen and Goddard. They barely experienced even the slightest thrust. But in addition to their good looks, they were one of the most attractive couples ever to grace the small screen. Kristen was sometimes found to be too attractive to be fitting for some roles. Even after decades passed, Kristen would still laugh whenever she remembered the memories she had of the show. In an interview, she revealed that during the time of filming, the cast became more like family, and they were all inseparable. There were even times when all of them had trouble shooting a scene because they were unable to stop laughing at things they found funny during the set. Kristen also wonders if Erwin Allen was afraid of her natural sensuality. During that time, she was considered highly attractive. She revealed that although she was young, her attractiveness mainly came from her innocence. Kristen then added that the network was very afraid of that, especially in the scenes she had with Mark. The actress had even tested for a role in The Sound of Music, in which her friend and co-star Angela Cartwright had starred, but says she was deemed too attractive for it. She believed that her Norwegian looks were what made her stand out and be seen as such an attraction. Today. Kristen paints and coaches young actors. She finds a lot of thrill in teaching someone all the different things she learned throughout her career. Kristen claims that she loves what she currently does, and because she has retired, teaching is the only thing that brings her closer to acting. Kristen kept on working with Goddard even after Lost in Space. After Lost in Space, both Kristen and Goddard went on to perform in numerous television series, films, commercials, and theater productions. Despite their fame from Lost in Space, both actors had lively careers even after the show's three-year run. When Kristen gave birth to her daughter, she started focusing more on appearing in commercials rather than movies. In just a couple of years, Kristen had appeared in over 40 commercials. However, she did make some film appearances here and there. Some movies she took part in at that time were Terminal Island, Once, and the cult science fiction film Battle Beyond the Stars. She also appeared in the A&D biography Jonathan Harris, Never Fear, Smith is Here in 2002, and provided voice work for the 2009 animated theatrical short play titled The Bolt Who Screwed Christmas, which also included voice work from her Lost in Space co-stars Harris, Mumi, and Angela Cartwright. Which one of these facts shock you the most about Marta Kristen? Let us know your thoughts and check out the next video in this series.